When it comes to the LeBron vs. Jordan debate, of course there's tons of factors, tons of variables to determine which player is actually better, as well as greater. Whether it be competition, teammate help, the better peak, the better prime, or which player the better clutch time moments. We're down to two, out of one, here's Jordan, yes! He goes, LeBron for the lead, not there, Now, one factor that is really talked about is which player LeBron or Jordan actually made their teammates better. And Draymond Green in this clip is going to make his case about LeBron James is better than Jordan because of that factor. Uh, what separates them on the court to, to me make is... you give Ron the push? What separates what what separates them on the court to me is I think number one, Bron's intention to make Bron's intention to make people better. The guys that LeBron has made better, like did you see them play without him? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. Like, come on, his but Mo he was, was an all star with Bron. About Booby Gibson, exactly. His household yeah, yeah. name, Fuck and he was intentional about making those guys better. Yeah. MJ made guys better just because of how good he was. Yeah. It wasn't like, ah, I think this way, so I'm going to do this to get this guy this. No, you just so good that then that guy can get off. Now, stopping German right there, that was a lot of rambling and nonsense that honestly went nowhere. And his overall point is kind of simple, but also extremely dumb. He's saying LeBron James with his teammates had intent to make them better. And while Jordan made his teammates better, it wasn't his intent to do that. He was just so great, so amazing, he did it by default. How that makes LeBron better, honestly, I have no idea. And to break this down pretty thoroughly, we're going to go bullet point by bullet point, looking at the first one, which is a doozy. His, but Mo he was, was an all-star with Bron. About Booby Gibson. Exactly. His household yeah. name. Fuck and him. he was intentional about making those guys better. Now, here's the thing. If you're trying to say LeBron James had an intent to make players better, Mo Williams, not the guy I'd look to. As Mo prior to Cleveland's production was the exact same as it was with LeBron James. 17 points, solid shooting, his assists were down, but still all in all, the exact same player in Cleveland that he was before. The guys that LeBron has made better, like, did you see them play without him? Okay. Yeah, 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 facts. Like, come on. Now, that right there is claim number two, saying, you know, you see those guys without LeBron James, they were just awful, they were trash, and they were nothing. Which, I don't know which team Jermont's talking about which players, but let's assume Cleveland and Miami. And the common error for this talking point, what do they always go to? The Cavs record with LeBron James compared to without. And looking at those teams, if you do any amount of research, those rosters were entirely different in 2010 compared to 2011. As of course, in 2010, had LeBron James, as old Mo Williams, Antoine Jameson, Virgil, Anthony Parker, Dante West, Shaq, J.J. Hickson, as well as Big Z. And looking at Mo Williams, in 2011, he was a Cavalier for only 35 games before being traded. Antoine Jameson, he missed 26 games, Verja missed 51, Anthony Parker wasn't the team, Delonte West, he wasn't, Shaq, he wasn't, and Big Z was in Miami. In no way was this Cavaliers team an accurate representation of LeBron James and his overall value. And even looking at Miami, they did the exact same thing. As the 2014 Heat with LeBron James, they won 54 games. Now the following year in 2015, it dipped down to 37, minus LeBron James. And what some fans like Draymond do off the bat, they say, well, 54 minus 37, LeBron's value, it was almost 20 games. Again, do the slightest bit of research and you'll realize this team was completely different in 2015 compared to 2014. As looking at Dwayne Wade in the 2015 season, he missed 20 games, Boss missed 38, had to retire, Ray Allen also retired, Battier retired, Chris Anderson missed 20 games, and Rashard Lewis also retired. And here's one fact by the mainstream sports media that gets completely ignored. The Heat in 2016, without Chris Bosch who had to retire, they won 48 games and went to Game 7 of the second round. Now why is that important? 
Because a lot of LeBron James fans, Nick Wright, Shannon Sharp, they look at the 94 Bulls, who did the exact same thing, Game 7 of the second round, and they hold that up as proof as Jordan, that he wasn't valuable, wasn't impactful, and the Bulls really didn't need him. The guys that LeBron has made better, like, did you see them play without him? Fuck and him. he was intentional about making those guys better. No. MJ made guys better just because of how good he was. Yeah. It wasn't like, ah, I think this way. So think about that. If LeBron James makes players better, why are they immediately trash without him? Does that make sense? Here's also a big time hole in this narrative. For LeBron James in Cleveland, Los Angeles, and Miami, what's the narrative always been when he loses? Well, doesn't have enough help, needs more shooting, more defense, he needs a better point guard. There's always an excuse LeBron James doesn't have enough help. But at the same time, this guy allegedly makes all of his teammates better. How did that add up? What this comes down to is that Michael Jordan, he played in a team system for the majority of his career in the entire 1990s. And when you play in a team system, guys, they know their roles, know their reads, they know where to go on a game-to-game -game basis. When you're playing the LeBron James system, what are you doing? Sit in the corner waiting, watching him run pick and roll, go ISO, or post up on the block. Those guys in that offense are basically reading reacting to LeBron James and all of his movement. If you played basketball, that is much harder than playing in a team system. And when Draymond implies Jordan had the foresight, the intention to make players better, I gotta ask, how does he actually know that? And look, also me, you, anyone watching this video, we weren't in the Bulls locker rooms, their practice, we weren't on the teams. But reading articles, reading books, listening to interviews, you know Michael Jordan, late 80s, early 90s, he made it a purposeful intent to make his teammates better. Yeah, let's not get it wrong, he was an he was a jerk. He crossed the line numerous times. But as time goes on and you think back about what he was actually trying to accomplish, you're like, yeah, he was a hell of a teammate. He was pushing us all to be better because he wanted to win. And guess what? It worked. We kind of needed that, you know what I'm saying? I needed him to be the bad guy, the tough guy. And look, when it comes to Scottie Pippen being a great player, you can't deny Michael Jordan had a huge impact on that happening. As those two guys in practice, it was basically iron sharpening iron. When Jordan got better, Pippen got better. When Pippen got better, Jordan got better. When it comes to LeBron and his career, I can't think of one player young, old, in their prime who this guy took under his wing and made them a great player by his impact. One guy he could have done that for was Andrew Wiggins. But of course, what happened? LeBron traded him. Then in 2019, again, had a young supporting cast, a young core, but it was a train wreck, and then again, traded them. Most of LeBron's help and his superstar help, they doesn't make better. Those guys were in their prime, they were ascending before LeBron got there. Case in point, Dwayne Wade. This guy pre-LeBron James, he was an NBA champion. Also five-time All-NBA, three-time All-Defense, and a one-time scoring champ. And of course in 2011, with LeBron James on his team, outperformed him in the postseason. And here is one very, very key point of this entire video. D-Wade in 2012 admittedly changed his game much more to fit around LeBron James. Playing off ball, being more defensive, you know, being more of a second option LeBron James, the clear cut one. And Wade says verbatim, it's not a conversation that he sacrificed more and changed his game more. Which once again proves LeBron James, not the best teammate got to play with, you're going to be yourself and be your full potential. Now looking at someone like Kyrie Irving, again, before LeBron James, was ascending and major prestige. As of course in 2011 was the first pick, the rookie of the year, two-time All-Star, and the All-Star Game MVP. Looking at Anthony Davis, once again, a blue chip prospect, first overall pick, could already arrive before LeBron James had ever traded for him. As of course AD pre-LeBron, six-time All-Star, three-time All-NBA, and three-time defensive. Davis at age 21, he was first team All-NBA. In no way was Davis, Wade, or Kyrie 
molded by LeBron James, like Jordan did with Scottie Pippen. Now, the two most damning instances LeBron James not making teammates better is Kevin Love and Chris Bosh. And these two guys, they're almost joined at the hip because their careers are eerily similar. As pre LeBron James, what were these guys known for? 20 points, 10 boards, elite power forwards who operated on the block. Now, with LeBron James, what happened? These guys changed their entire games for LeBron James. No more double doubles, 20 point games a three-point shooting pace in space, and playing defense. So that right there is the end of the video. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.